What up, my friends? Welcome back to another Tag Time here with you. Glad to be here. I'm Pastor Carol. For those of you that might be new, for those of y'all that are not new but I haven't seen you in a while, what up? It's good to be with you as always. Any chance you get to come to service in person, I'd love to see you and say what's up as normal. But for now, since we're not able to meet in a normal spot, we're just doing our videos. So make sure that you commit week after week to spend some time hearing God's word. It'll be huge for your growth. It'll be huge for the rest of your life that you live if you set these foundations down deep right now. So I just encourage you. I'm glad you're here right now. Hope you'll continue to be here. Pay attention while we go over the word because God has some good stuff for you. I believe it and I know it and we're going to see about it in just a minute. All right, so I'm going to tell you now, and I'll try and tell you again at the end, we're going to do another Zoom call this week, because I'd love to see your faces and catch up with you, see what's going on, still trying to find out what is the best day to do Zoom. So if you have a, a, a day that you would like to pick, you can put it in the comments, you can text me direct, you can tell me at church, you can tell your mom to tell me, whatever it is, let me know what's the best day, and if I can get some feedback on that we will choose a day. So for this week, we're going to do it again on Sunday, and we're going to do it at uh, 6 o'clock. All right, 6 p.m. this Sunday. So this video airs on Sunday, it premieres on Sunday. So later today, if you're watching on Sunday, we're going to have our Zoom call Sunday at 6 o'clock. If you watch it later, uh, get on the list, still text the number, text tag Zoom to the number here. And you can get on the list and I'll be able to send out a reminder to you of when the next Zoom call is going to be coming up. All right. So do that, please. Pretty please with a cherry on top. So we're going to get into the word. I'm trying to remind you about that at the end. We're going to get into the word for today. First, we're going to pray. Father, we thank you for an opportunity uh, to get together, even virtually, to be able to learn more about your word, learn more about who you created us to be how we can live within your system and benefit and experience all the great things that you have for us as your children. Pray that you will speak through me as we uh, go over this word, that you will speak to us, that we would have ears to hear, eyes to see. Give you the glory, honor, and praise for all your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, friends, get your Bible out. Open your Bible app or whatever it is that you're using, making sure that you're focused only on the word, of course. So get your Bible out. I want you to go to Matthew chapter 6. We're going to pick up where we left off the last time. All right. So if you saw that last video, that's great. If you didn't, you can always go back and watch it. We're talking about the Lord's Prayer. And what did I say that we should actually call the Lord's Prayer? I don't know if you got it. I hope you did. I said we really should call the Lord's Prayer the Disciples' Prayer because the prayer that we call the Lord's Prayer was actually Jesus answering the question of the disciples when the disciples asked him, how do we pray? And he said, when you pray, you should pray like this. And so it's really not the Lord's Prayer per se. It's the disciples' prayer because it's the prayer that he gave them to pray. So we're looking in Matthew chapter 6. I want to start at verse number 9. And then we're just going to review a couple of things. We looked at a couple of these points last time. But I'll review them, uh, a couple of them, and then we'll finish out the rest of the prayer. So as we go through this prayer, this is something that we should model our prayers after. Everybody say, model our prayers after. Say it out loud. Model our prayers after. Yes, we want to model our prayers after this. That means we want our prayers to be like this. When you see a model in the fashion industry or in the fashion world, the model is wearing the clothes so you can see how they might look on you or you see how they look on a person or you might see how to wear it a certain way. So in this, we see this prayer is a model and it's going to show us how to pray. That means we don't need to pray it verbatim exactly, but we want to pray. We want our prayer to be something like it. So we're going to see how our prayer should, should say some of the same things, but it should also have the same structure. You're in school. You're highly educated. You're geniuses. I know that. So you remember uh, learning sentence structure when you were in your younger years, and you're, you're probably still learning more about it now. Remember back in uh, elementary school when you learned how to diagram a sentence 
And so we learned that their sentences had a structure, a paragraph has a structure, a story has a certain structure. So we want to use the structure of this prayer to help guide our future prayers so that we can do what God has for us to do. Now, there is a scripture over in James. We're not going to look at it today, but there's a scripture over in James later in the New Testament where the Bible says, you have not because you ask not. And then it says, sometimes when you do ask, you still don't have it because you ask amiss or you don't ask the right way. So if my kids come up to me and they say, give me some mac and cheese, they ask the wrong way because they actually didn't ask at all. If they come up and say, hey, yo, man, can I get some mac and cheese? Nope, it's not how we do it. They ask the wrong way. So they're not going to get what they want because they didn't ask the right way. Same thing can happen in prayer. God wants us to approach him. He wants to fulfill our needs. He wants to bless us, but he tells us the order and the way that things are supposed to be done. And I can respect that. The Bible says that everything should be done decently and in order. And so we want to do it in order based on what God says. So this is one outline, one uh, clue, one gift of how we can and should pray. So verse number nine, Matthew chapter six, look at, look at it with me. I'm going to read from the King James Bible and you should too. It's my recommendation. Anyway, it says after this manner, therefore pray ye. All right. So this is Jesus saying, pray like this after this manner. He didn't say, say these words or only pray this one prayer. He says after this manner, which is, is showing that it's a model. So he says, after this manner, pray ye, or you pray this way, our Father, who art in, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So that is the prayer. It's a short prayer. Let's break it down and look at it real quick. First thing we see, the manner in which we should pray is our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's praise and worship in a sentence. The first thing we're supposed to do in prayer is to honor God. Now, God, uh, the Father, is your Father. God loves you. So you don't have to be all formal when you talk to your Father. But you can also honor your father formally. So you don't have to come down like a, a slave or a servant when you want to talk to God the Father. But you can still stand there and honor them. We're supposed to honor our parents. We're supposed to honor our mother and father. And that extends our days on the earth according to the Bible. So I don't want you to think, that whenever you pray, you have to get all deep and you have to get all hunched down and get all serious. No, it's not like that. But there are times when you're going before the Lord um, that you do want to pray a certain way. But whenever you pray, however you pray, you want to honor the Father. Sometimes you might honor him by calling him Father. And other times you can honor him in different ways. So he starts out his prayer by honoring the Father. He doesn't uh, come into the presence of God saying, God, I want this. God, I need that. Why haven't you done this? What's going on with that? Didn't you say? He didn't walk into the presence like that. He walked into the presence with honor. And so we want to come into the presence with honor. I'm taking too long on that because we already talked about it, right? So honor the Father. So he says, uh, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That word hallowed means holy or special. All right, then we go on to verse number 10. It says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. We want to, we want our prayers to be structured so that we are asking for God's way of doing things to happen and come to pass. Okay. We are praying for things that we want, that we desire, but we also want to know that we only want desires that line up with God's desires. So we want to be blessed, but we want to be blessed in God's way. We want to uh, excel and exceed and, and have great things happen as a, in, a, in our lives as a result of God's goodness. But we never want to get outside of the plan of God. So we're saying that I'm, I'm moving forward in this prayer 
I have some things that I'm asking of you, but it's your will that needs to be done. Then he also says, uh, thy kingdom come. The kingdom of God is a way of doing things, which is what something we'll talk about in another time or lesson. But he's saying the way you do things, your kingdom come, your rulership, your leadership come and be present on earth as it is in heaven. So we are asking when we pray, we're asking God to help make happen, make these things happen in such a way that the way things operate in heaven is the same way that they operate in earth. So when we pray, we want to remember to pray that God's will will be done along with whatever else it is that we're asking. And then we're also saying that we don't want to ask or do anything that's outside the will of God. All right, let's move on. The next verse, number 11, give us this day our daily bread. God wants to give you daily bread. God doesn't want to just see you once a week. I know we have church once a week. Sometimes we used to, some places have church twice a week. But the going to church isn't the only time that we're able to talk to God, okay? So we're asking him for our daily bread, which means we should be spending time in prayer. How often? Daily. We need to spend time in prayer daily so that we can get our daily needs met. God wants that kind of relationship with you where we're able to chop it up each and every day, not here and there. And sometimes God wants to be your God every day. And then we ask God for our daily provision. As you grow and learn, you, you should learn that God is your provider. God wants to be your provider the same way that he provided for the Israelites when they were in the wilderness. He gave them food and took care of them every single day. And we might have jobs with schedules and paychecks and pay periods of, of these two weeks or, or weekly or whatever your, your pay period might be. We have all that stuff set up, but we want to remember that God gives us our daily bread. Then he says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. We want to forgive those who've messed us up. We need to forgive those that have held something against us that did us wrong. We can't hold on to gripes. We can't hold on to complaints. Can't hold on to issues and still want God to bless us. To bless us and act like um, everything is okay. So the pattern is we want to forgive others the same way we want God to forgive us. So the same way you want God to forgive you for the, the, the ridiculous stuff that you were doing last week, last month, last year. I know what you did last summer. If you want God to forgive you for those things, the pattern is we should also be willing to forgive other people who've done things against us. So we want to go into prayer, having forgiven anyone that we need to forgive and letting go of anything that we need to let go of. And then verse 13, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God wants to lead us. Of course, he's not going to lead us into temptation, but we've at, but we're asking him to lead us and guide us through our lives. We want him to lead us when we go to school. We want him to lead us when we go play basketball or hang out with our friends, we want God to lead us constantly because it's his leading that causes us to be safe, that causes us to get extra benefits, that causes things to work out the way that they're supposed to be. So we're not supposed to make decisions in life and then ask God to bless the decision that we made. We're supposed to ask the Lord, what decisions should we make? Where do you want me to go? What choices do you want me to make? So again, those of you that are getting close to college age, Ask the Lord to lead you to what your next step is. Do you need to do something vocational? Do you need to just go to school? What school do you go to? What field do you need to get in? All those kind of things. Ask the Lord about it. Let him direct you. That's always the shortest path between where you are and where you want to be. So lead us not to station, but deliver us from evil. We're also asking the Lord. Of course, he doesn't want us to go toward evil, but we need to ask him to deliver us from evil. We want to pray and ask the Lord to show us where the traps are. Show us where Satan is trying to trick us. Show us the places that we don't see clearly right now. Because there, there are times when people might be setting us up for failure. There are times that we might be going in a direction that seems like it's a great direction, but we don't know what's going on. 
you know, we're still dealing with the, uh, pan the effects of the pandemic and, and people's reaction to that, which I think has just been crazy. But anyway, we're still dealing with that. And that's why we're doing this on video and not in person. All right. So uh, if we ask the Lord to lead us, the Lord would have been able to, let's say you were grown and you wanted to start a restaurant and you were going to leave your job to start a restaurant. If you would ask the Lord to lead you, he probably would have told you, don't start the restaurant in February or March of this year or January. I've seen some restaurants that were set to open right after the pandemic started, but they didn't know what was coming. And so when we ask the Lord to lead us, he'll tell us where we need to go so that we can not have unnecessary detours and difficulties. Going on down to the end, lead us not to station, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. So the same way we start the prayer is the way we end the prayer, honoring God, acknowledging his awesomeness and his greatness. And that's all you do. You close up your prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll talk a little bit more about how to pray next week. I hope to see you on our Zoom call. Text the number, text, tag Zoom to the number so we can get into it. I want to see your face on that Zoom call. If you have any questions, as always, let me know. For now, that's it. Tag, you're it. <laughs>